Hi, hello, call me Mona or Luna or Mona Luna, whichever one, I don't care. So today, I am back with another video. So, uh, just to quickly go over um, the big plans for October that fell through. <laughs> so I announced it on my Instagram stories, but I'm pretty sure, I don't, not everybody's on my Instagram. But um, to give you guys a short explanation, I had a health scare and I had to go get tested. I am fine. I came back negative. And yes, I am talking about the Rona. Um, I am lucky enough that I tested out negative. And that is thanks to people uh, wearing their masks and adhering to the six feet social distancing. So I would like to put out this reminder to wear your damn masks and to please stay six feet apart. Uh, I am high risk, so it was a very scary time for me. Um, but again, I'm fine, and if I would have gotten it, I probably most likely would not have been here, and I'm not dream being dramatic. I am not being dramatic. I probably wouldn't be here. And then, right after that Rona scare, I forgot I had midterms. I have a very bad case of senioritis. I am almost done. I'm almost out of college. I'm so close. I'm so close. I just need next semester, and I've just been forgetting the simplest shit ever, so... I'm back. Hopefully I can get a schedule going on. Um, but uh, I will work out those details a little bit later. Now, the witchy season has passed. It is November 1st right now as I'm recording. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that were, like, were using Halloween as a I'm going to be a witch or I'm going to be a practitioner. And so this video is going to be for those aspiring witches, those aspiring practitioners that have decided to come out. Now, I am not dissing anybody. I just happen, I just I just know, I just see a trend that um, people decide to go on this spiritual journey around this time. Nothing wrong with that. But if you are going to be taking this seriously and you don't exactly know where to start, um, I wanna make this video for those of you out there. So, I want to put out a disclaimer too. I am going to be talking in a witch perspective, so I am putting out that disclaimer out there so that um, if there is a specific path that you're going on that you want more details on, I'm just letting you know that if the witch label, whatever you want to call it, does not pertain to you, I would just keep searching, but if you want to stick around, see my points of view regardless because it is great to have different points of view. That's what I'm here for. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to dedicate this video of getting started in your witchcraft journey, I guess, as you can say. I don't know what I'm going to title it, but we'll just go with that for now. <laughs> the first things I want to put out there from the get-go, know the risks. I know there's people out there that sugarcoat things. I'm trying not to be harsh, but it's the truth. Some people are like, oh, well, this is safe. Or you could just do everything love and light and everything's going to be fine. No. I am telling you right now. This path that you're going on right now could potentially be risky. It can potentially be dangerous. Because there are certain things like hexing or working with poisonous herbs. That's just something to look out for. It is not completely safe. There are risky businesses that happen. So I just want to get that out there. Just be aware of it. Second thing I want to put out there is that Wicca is not the same as witchcraft, okay? I know when people start off, they end up reading the threefold law, all that shit. That is Wiccan. All of that is Wiccan. There is a clear difference between Wicca and witchcraft. If you see anything on the internet that ties those two together and say that they are the same thing, they are not. Wicca is a religion that was created in the 1950s by this guy named Gardner. I uh, will probably, well, I actually am going to be making a video more in depth about that. But just know that that is a religion. Witchcraft is a practice. Witchcraft can exist separately from a religion. It can be completely secular. You don't need to work with any gods, no nothing like that. It can completely be secular. So if you see anything that said that that 
paints Wicca and witchcraft as the same thing, they are not. They are not. If you are a witch, you are not Wiccan. But if you're a Wiccan, you can be a witch. Does that make sense? I just want to put that out there because I know I made that mistake when I first started in witchcraft. And that's just something I want to differentiate because I feel like even now it's still not differentiated enough and it's very frustrating. So putting that out there right now, they're not the same thing. They are not the same thing. Okay, now we're going to get into it. <laughs> so the first question is always is, well, how do I become a witch? How do I get started? You're going to be doing a lot of research and you're going to be doing a lot of practice. A lot. <laughs> that's the tip of the iceberg, but that's basically how you get started. Research, practice. You're going to spend a lot of time from here on out doing research and practicing. When you're researching into witchcraft and stuff, the first thing you're going to look at is these witchy books. And yeah, those are a great start, but you need to go above and beyond that. Because what you do in the spiritual world is what you do in the physical world. The spiritual world mirrors the physical world. You need to mirror them. If you do not mirror them, those spells and things that you're doing, they're not going to work. They need to connect to the real world. Because even though we are spirits, we are balls of energy, we are living a human experience. We still exist on this physical plane. We need to bring the spiritual plane into the physical plane if we want these things to work. And so instead of just looking primarily at spiritual documents and books and stuff like that, go above and beyond. Look at the psychology behind why it works. Look at the philosophy. Why do they think the way they do? Why why do they think it works? You need don't skip out on philosophy, trust me. That that is a very big key thing. I know people stress psychology, but you also need to look at the philosophy. Those things tie in together. Look at science books. You also need to look at academic articles. Look at historical documents. Look at the history of these practices. Where did they originate? It? Because all of that ties into the works and that's how whatever you're doing came to be. You need to go above and beyond. Get out of that witchcraft box. You need to go out. You need to really research and do all that stuff. You are always going to be learning something new. You're always going to be the student. You are always going to be doing something new. And you need to be open to making mistakes and learning from those mistakes because witchcraft doing spells and all that stuff practicing it's a lot of experimentation it's a lot of trial and error you need to be open to making mistakes don't worry about don't don't worry about messing up okay everybody messes up and i know when you first start and this is completely new people get afraid of like oh my god i'm going to mess up something really bad and i'm never going to be able to fix it trust me most of the time you can fix it especially if you did the proper research and you know what it's gonna do, it's fine. Don't worry about it that much. Don't worry about it that much, especially if you did proper research. Make sure you are taking proper precautions if you are doing a spell, that you are researching how to undo it, and that you know what each ingredient, what, why, what's its purpose, why are you doing it. Everybody makes mistakes. I still make mistakes. Some of my spells still backfire on me. You're always going to be learning. So just be open to that. And don't be afraid to try something new. Like I said, that's how you get better. And that's how you start to make your own path. That and Not everybody follows the same path. Okay. Not everybody has the same experiences. Not everybody's going to have the same spiritual journey. So don't worry about fitting into a category. Which brings me to my next topic that I want to talk about. I'm pretty sure if you're doing research, if you already looked into it, you're going to see these things called witch types. What type of witch am I going to be? I'm going to lay it out flat on you right now. Witch types are bullshit. Those crystal witches and those art witches. Or I'm a candle witch or I'm a cord witch. All of that is bullshit. It is bullshit. Do not pay attention to that. So, those labels are really dumb because, first of all, when you're doing witchcraft, every all, everybody is going to be using candles. Everybody is going to be using herbs. Everybody is going to be using spell bags. 
everybody's going to be using jars. Everybody's going to be doing using something. Had those little tiny minuscule labels are so restricting and it's really dumb. Those aren't the witch types that you're supposed to pay attention to. What you're supposed to pay attention to is paths. A witch path is the path that you are going to go down and there's many different paths that I would suggest you look into if you are trying to get specific. I really wouldn't worry about that right now. I would worry about it after you learn the basics, but if you want to dip your toes in, see what I'm talking about. There are different paths. You can take a pagan route. You can take a ceremonial route. You could also take the path of Wicca. Maybe you actually do want to be a Wiccan. And that those are paths. And those are the ones that you want to pay attention to. But for now, which types, which paths, all that stuff. Don't worry about that. Especially if you're like a complete beginner. You need to worry about the basics and learning your history first. Before you get in into that. The very important things that you're going to learn is the basics because the basics never go away you're always going to be doing them and so that leads me to the next topic which is the actual basics so those things that i'm mentioning those those things are grounding they're centering and they're cleansing for as long as you are practicing you are going to be grounding you're going to be centering and you're going to be cleansing so the best way i can describe grounding is in a more technical aspect so i build computers with my dad and when you're building a computer you need to ground yourself because when you're working with these electronics there is potential that you are going to be gathering static electricity you know when you accidentally shock somebody shock somebody that's static electricity it could potentially build up when you're working with electronics and you don't want to accidentally shock any part of the computer because you could short circuit those parts or you could short circuit potentially the entire thing that's connected and it won't work the static electricity is excess electricity and it needs to go somewhere so you ground it so that it has somewhere to go spiritual grounding works in that same way you are getting rid of that excess energy um not getting rid of it but you're grounding it you're you're putting it somewhere so that it's not going to backfire on you and it's not going to potentially mess up any workings that you're going to do that's why you ground you are putting that excess energy somewhere so that it is not interfering with you and so there are a lot of grounding techniques that you can do me personally if i need to ground just a little bit i will listen to music I'll hug my dog because I love my dog. My dog brings me back down to earth and I freaking love her. I make sure that I'm wearing something comfortable, that I'm relaxed. Sometimes I'll drink some tea and drink some water. It could be something simple like that. But if I really, really, really need to ground myself, I'm going to do visualizations. Visualizations are also something that you need to, that you're going to be practicing. I would also categorize that under the basics. So um, there's actually four things you need to know. That fourth one is visualizing. Uh, a visual technique that I use when I really need to ground. And what I suggest you should do as a beginner when you're grounding is the tree visualization. So what you do is that you're going to stand up, you're going to straighten your back, you're going to visualize roots coming out of your feet going into the center of the earth. You're going to see those roots going to that center of the earth, that core of the earth. And the energies, is, you're gonna connect the energy to, your energy to that. And you're gonna see it come up and circling around you. You're going to visualize your hands as branches you're going to raise them up you're going to visualize your hands as the branches raising up to the celestial skies the excess energy is coming out from the branches they are being recycled into the sky into space you're going to visualize it as like little sparkles you're going to see the energy that you're taking from the earth coming into you that grounded energy um that's the grounding technique that i use there's other slight iterations to them that you will find on the internet again this is not the only grounding technique there are more other grounding techniques i highly encourage you to research them to google them these are very easily googleable so please do that after grounding you are going to be doing centering which i also highly recommend after you ground to center 
um, because you're going to be doing that again, like I said, for the rest of your practices. And as a beginner, I would highly suggest that you do all of these three things all the time so you get used to how to do them. So just because you ground the energy does not mean that it's stable. Centering is that you are stabilizing the energy. So again, what you're gonna do, what, or what I do. So I visualize cord going into the center of my being. I believe that the center of my being is my chest. I feel like that's where my energy resides. So I imagine a string going from the heavens to my chest, and then from my chest going down below to the depths of the unknown. So anything that I feel that is not aligned, if I feel like this string is wobbly, I am going to visualize it coming back to the center, coming straight like this. Anything inside me that feels like it's scattered, I'm going to call it back to the center of my being. I am going to focus that energy back to my core. That's what centering is. That's how I visualize it. There are other centering techniques. Again, I highly recommend you research them. Find one that works for you. That's the one that works for me. Now we're going to be talking about cleansing. So you as a beginner and even as an advanced practitioner, you need to cleanse your space. You need to cleanse your space. There are energies that are lingering around, but some of them are very unnecessary and are unwanted and they could affect you and they could also affect your spell work. So you need to learn how to cleanse your space. There are more ways to cleanse than just smoke cleansing. There is sound cleansing. I go over these different types of cleansing in my um, broom closet witch tip video. That video isn't only for broom closet witches, but it could also serve you well if you are a beginner as well. So I would recommend watching that video too. I kind of go over that. Um, but smoke cleansing isn't the only way. If you do choose a smoke cleanse, I want to put out some warnings. I know a lot of people suggest sage to cleanse your space. And I would not advise using sage to cleanse your space because sage is a spiritual bleach. Sage, when you look into it, it gets rid of all of the energies. It sets your space neutral. So you need to layer sage with something like another scent or something else to burn to bring back the energies that you want into your space. I know some people also say to use Palo Santo. I know people say Palo Santo is endangered. As far as I read, somebody can correct me on this too. It is endangered because there are corporations out there that want the land that the Palo Santo trees are in. And so they are bulldozing them and ripping them out and doing all this crap to build their skyscrapers, their homes, their businesses and stuff. That's the reason why it's endangered. If you don't feel comfortable using Palo Santo, if you want to avoid all that controversy, there is other ways to smoke cleanse. Like sandalwood. I know sandalwood's one that you could smoke cleanse with. But, again, smoke cleansing isn't the only way you could cleanse your space. There's plenty of other ways. Like sound. I go over that in my broom closet, which is the video. Go watch it. Okay, so, um, originally this was supposed to be a fast video, but I'm pretty sure I went above and beyond with my little mini rants, but... You know what? Those mini rants were important. So, <laughs> um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just something I wanted to put out there. And, um, yeah, I hope it was helpful for you. This is the end of the video. I stopped with the basics, the three basics. I am going to be making more videos in the future, talk, going more in depth about more things. These are just like the very tip of the iceberg, like I said of things that i feel like you should know when you're first starting out uh with that i hope you had a good day or night or whatever it is because i don't know where you live and time zones exist let me know down in the comments below any questions that you have i am willing to answer them uh let me know what other beginner topics you want me to talk about i'm very open to talking about anything going more in depth giving you more in depth video uh subscribe if you want to see more of this content like i said i'll be putting out more i know i'm not i'm not going to say anything about having big plans because um this year every time i make plans they get destroyed like like i said at the beginning of the video what happened to me i don't want to jinx it so i'm not <laughs> just know that i'm going to be putting out more content so follow me on my instagram it is mona.lunita do all that Hit the like button.
subscribe and um go follow me on my witchy instagram and yeah that's all i have for today bye <laughs>